So in this video, I want to show you the connection between displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. And if you've met uh, differentiation already, uh, then go back and see some of the videos that I've done on that where I link together uh, the function of y, uh, its first derivative and its second derivative. The gradient functions as you work down, these are inherently linked and really tell you about where we're going to be going with this. So, what are we looking at here? Well, what I've done is I've drawn in parts of a particle's motion. Okay, I haven't. There are some gaps here that I need to fill in, uh, that I need to interpret. Um, so I know, for example, that the displacement uh, when t is five is ten meters. Um, when the displacement uh, when uh, we're at time ten, the displacement is zero. I also know that when uh, time is uh, 20, for example, the velocity is zero. So there are certain things that we know, but there are these bits with the displacement and the acceleration between zero and five, for example, that we don't know. Uh, I don't know the velocity uh, between five and 10 or the acceleration between five and 10, etc. And our job is to fill in the gaps. Okay, what is going on? So. If we have a look at this first section here, okay, we've got the information that the velocity at time zero is four meters per second. And when we get to times five, the velocity has gone to zero. Okay? So what that means is that the particle is slowing down. It starts off pretty quickly at four meters per second, but then slows down over time. Okay? So what would that look like for the particle? what would the particle's uh, displacement look like? Well, if the speed is occurring uh, quickly, okay, then we would be looking at a quick speed change, and then it is slowing down. Okay, So we can also see that the area of this triangle is half times base times height. Okay, So that would give you 10 metres. So that is why we are covering 10 metres in that motion. So the area of that triangle is telling you how far we've actually travelled uh, in those first five seconds. So the acceleration, what would be the acceleration? The acceleration is the gradient of that line. Okay, So if I'm looking at the grain of that line, uh, we've got uh, minus 4 divided by 5, so minus 0 0.8. It's got a negative gradient, so we're going to be at minus 0 0.8 all the way between 0 and 5. So it would be a horizontal line. Okay, And it's appearing below the axis because we've got uh, a negative gradient to the line. Now, between 5 and 10, uh, the displacement of the particle uh, goes from 10 down to 0. Okay? So the velocity is the gradient of that line. Okay? So we've got 10 divided by 5, but we've got a negative gradient, so that would be minus 2. Okay? So minus 2 would be somewhere around here, I reckon. And as you can see, it will just be a horizontal line uh, because it is minus 2 all the way between 5 and 10 because that's a straight line there. So that means that the acceleration, well, is the gradient of that line. And the gradient of a horizontal line is 0. So the acceleration of the particle is 0 between 5 and 10. Now, between 10 and 15, OK, then um, I drop down to 8 uh, minus 8 metres, so I'm going back on myself, OK? Now, the gradient of that line will be my velocity. So we've got minus 8 divided by 5, and that will give me minus 1.6. So minus 1.6 would be a line that looks something like that, OK? So we have minus 1.6 in there. And then the acceleration will be the grain of that line, which is still zero. Okay. 
Right, then between 5 and 10, uh, five and, uh, 15 and 20 rather, we've got uh, going back up to 0, so I'm returning to my initial position. And the gradient of that line is going to be 8 over 5, so the 1.6. So 1.6 would probably be around about there. So we're looking at a horizontal line there. And so the acceleration is the gradient of a straight line, and so zero. Now, for the last part between 20 and 25, uh, the velocity is increasing from zero up to um, four meters per second. So the displacement of the particle, what would that look like? So I'm starting off slow and then I'm increasing in speed, okay? Now, I also need to think about, well, what's the area of that triangle? Because then I need to think about the height, uh, what I reach, okay, for the total displacement there. So the area of this triangle is half base times height, okay, which is going to get me 10 meters. So, I know that I'm going to reach up to 10 meters here. So I start off slow, and then I'm going to start increasing in speed. OK, so it will look something like that. Starting off slow, so I'm not going to be moving very far, and then I'm going to pick up to the 10 meters as I increase in speed. Now, the acceleration will be the gradient of that line, OK? So 4 divided by 5, and so 0 0.8. OK? So a horizontal line there. So this is what the particle's uh, displacement time, velocity time, and acceleration time will look like. Things to notice... Um, as we work through this, are uh, firstly that when I've looked at this uh, straight line, these diagonal lines, okay, representing the velocity, okay, if you've met integration before, then this straight line, if you're then looking at uh, the area. Uh, below the below the line, you could use a definite integral to work that out. So in integrating, okay, a straight line will integrate to a quadratic. And so these shapes here, this one and this one, they are actually going to be parts of a parabola. Okay, they're going to be a quadratic. So if I had had uh, a parabolic section for the velocity, my displacement would look like a cubic. Okay, so that they're kind of like little things to notice. Um, so that kind of differentiation integration side means that, right, well, okay, if I um, have the acceleration not being constant. So in all of these, the, all of this bit, the acceleration is constant. It's at minus 0 0.8, then it's at 0, then it's at 0 0.8, okay? But the line segments, the actual sections, the, the acceleration is constant. Um, if it wasn't, then in order to really maneuver yourself between these rows and these graphs, you're then needing to think about, okay, I need to think about integration, I need to think about differentiation, okay? And that's where it's going to lead into looking at calculus in kinematics, which we'll look at in a couple of sections' time, and general motion. Um, in the next section, we really focus on constant acceleration um, and the types of problems that we face with the constant acceleration formulae. But then, as you can see, this is hinting at um, further problems along the line where we're going to have to start using calculus.